Good morning and welcome. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. The Apostle Paul puts it best when he says and writes at the end of our second lesson for today that there is nothing that can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. Our God is so powerful, He won't allow anything to get between His love and us. Let us worship Him. We begin with the singing of our first hymn, which is hymn number 735. It is from Christian Worship Supplement that you have in the pew in which you're seated. Uh, We'll also be using Christian Worship Supplement uh, Divine Service 2 as our liturgy this morning. So we begin with the singing of hymn number 735. Please rise. We follow the order of worship. Divine Service 2, it is in Christian Worship Supplement. It begins on page 28. We also welcome those who may be worshiping with us from afar this morning, those in Sitka, Cordova, Prudhoe Bay, Happy Valley, and Willow, Alaska. 
Lord willing, I'll be in Kodiak later today and uh, for a service and visits this week. Uh, Rodeo, Los Alamos, and Silver City, New Mexico. Douglas, Arizona. Lagodi, Indiana. Raymond, Mississippi. Winfield. And Belleville, Kansas. Welcome. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, let us approach God with a true heart and confess our sins, asking Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to forgive us. Lord of life, I confess that I am by nature dead in sin, for faithless worrying and selfish pride, for sins of habit and sins of choice, for the evil I have done and the good I have failed to do. You should cast me away from your presence forever. O oh Lord, I am sorry for my sins. Forgive me for Jesus' sake. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. In His great mercy, God has made us alive in Christ even when we were dead in our sins. Hear the word of Christ through His called servant. I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In peace, let us pray to the Lord for the well-being of all people everywhere that they may receive from you all they need to sustain body and life. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the spread of your life-giving gospel throughout the world, that all who are lost in sin may be brought to faith in you. Hear our prayer, O Christ. Christ, Christ have mercy. For patience and perseverance in this life, that we may not lose the hope of heaven as we await your return. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. Lord of life, live in us that we may live for you. God, you reveal your mighty power chiefly in showing mercy and kindness. Grant us the full measure of your grace that we may obtain your promises and become partakers of your heavenly glory through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated for the scripture readings.
Our Old Testament reading for this, the 11th Sunday after Pentecost, is recorded in the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 55, beginning with the first verse. These first five verses are going to be our sermon text for this morning. Prophet Isaiah writes, Come all you who are thirsty, come to the waters, and you who have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Why spend money on what is not bread and your labor on what does not satisfy? Listen to me and eat what is good and your soul will delight in the richest of fare. Give ear and come to me. Hear me that your soul may live. I will make an everlasting covenant with you my faithful love promised to David. See, I have made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander of the peoples, Surely you will summon nations you know not, and nations that do not know you will hasten to you. Because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for He has endowed you with splendor. Here ends our Old Testament reading. We continue with the singing of our next hymn. It is from the songbook, and it begins on page 166. Our second lesson uh, is a continuation of our readings from the book of Romans during the season of Pentecost, and it comes from Romans chapter 8, verses 35 through 39, where the Apostle Paul reminds us that we are victors, we are conquerors through Christ. And as he 
writes these words, he just reminds us that, that in our lives there are things that shake us, that can shake us to the very core. We might even ask questions about what God has allowed in our lives. But it comes back to God's Word, God's promise, and His hold on us. Paul writes, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, For your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through Him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Here ends our second lesson. Hallelujah. Jesus replied, If anyone loves me, he will obey my teaching. My Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. Hallelujah. stand for the Gospel reading. The Holy Gospel is recorded in the 14th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Matthew, beginning with the 13th verse. When Jesus heard what had happened, He withdrew by boat privately to a solitary place. Hearing of this, the crowds followed Him on foot from the towns. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them and healed their sick. As evening approached, the disciples came to him and said, This is a remote place and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the village, villages and buy themselves some food. Jesus replied, They do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. We have here only five loaves of bread and two fish, they answered. Bring them here to me, Jesus said, or he said, and he directed the people to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them to the disciples and the disciples gave them to the people. They all ate and were satisfied and the disciples picked up twelve basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. The number of those who ate was about five thousand men besides women and children. Here ends our Gospel reading. Please be seated. We continue with the singing of our next hymn, hymn number 433 from the Red Hymnal.
Grace, pardon, and everlasting life are yours. From God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. God's word for our meditation this morning is recorded in Isaiah chapter 55, verses 1 through 5, and I invite you to follow along on the back side of your service folder. Come, all who are thirsty, come to the waters, and you who have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Why spend money on what is not bread and your labor on what does not satisfy? Listen, listen to me and eat what is good and your soul will delight in the richest affair. Give ear and come to me. Hear me that your soul may live. I will make an everlasting covenant with you, my faithful love promised to David. See, I have made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander of the peoples. Surely you will summon nations you know not, and nations that do not know you will hasten to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has endowed you with splendor. This is God's word. We bow our heads for prayer. Heavenly Father, as we hear your word for today, Make us hungry and thirsty to hear more that come from your lips into our hearts. Bless your word. Send your Holy Spirit to strengthen our faith. In your name we ask this. Amen. Dear friends, you may have heard the adage, give me a fish and you feed me for a day. Teach me how to fish and you feed me for a lifetime. Well, there's a kernel of truth there. I suppose that presupposes that we're just going to be eating fish for breakfast, lunch, and supper the rest of our lives. But we do know that when it comes to eating, there's a lot of different variety of things that we can eat out there to sustain the body that God has given to us. And it's that variety, I think, that causes us to delight in a good meal. But even the best meal that we can ever imagine is a meal that only lasts for a couple of hours before our stomach starts to grumble. And maybe those visions on television or on the internet of food cause us to run to the refrigerator so that we can take care of the hunger pains within us. We need constant sustenance. We need to continue to feed the body that God's given to us so that we can do the task that He's called us to do. And so we do become hungry. We do become thirsty. And it is no different when it comes to our spiritual life. There is a spiritual hunger and a spiritual thirst that God puts into every one of us that causes us to want to hear more and to receive more from Him in a spiritual way. How much would it cost to have a permanent type of meal? How much would it cost to take care of the spiritual needs that we have? There's no checkbook that could write a check big enough. There's no credit card company that would take on that amount. The only way that we could receive that is from the grace of God. He's the one who paid the price with His Son's life, death, and resurrection for every one of us. And for us, in a sense, it really is. It really is the bargain of a lifetime because it doesn't cost us anything and yet the cost was more than we could ever imagine. Because the price of eternal spiritual satisfaction is the lifeblood of God's own promised one, Jesus Christ. But the prophet Isaiah points us to how important it is that we continue to feed on the spiritual food that God has given to us. Isaiah lived about 700 years before Jesus. And he lived during a very difficult time in Israel's history. In fact, 
it wasn't the golden age of Israel. In fact, maybe we could even say it was like the rust age of Israel because not only were the northern ten tribes going to be carted off into Assyrian captivity forever, but even Judah, the southern two tribes, were going to suffer in captivity for 70 years. Oh, it was definitely a time when Isaiah spoke the words of our text today where people needed to be needed to be hungry and thirsty for what God had to uh, provide for them. The prophet Amos, who lived and was a contemporary of that age, wrote these words. He said, The days are coming, declares the Sovereign Lord, when I will send a famine through the land, not a famine of food or a thirst for water, but a famine of hearing the words of the Lord. Men will stagger from sea to sea and wander from north to east searching for the word of the Lord, but they will not find it. The famine and drought had come that Amos was talking about. Because there was now a spiritual thirst, a spiritual famine that was going on. But people could not find the word of God even though they staggered from sea to sea They could not find it. So the the prophet Isaiah wanted people to feel thirsty and hungry for the Lord. He wanted people to realize just how spiritually deficient they were and how weak and weaker they were getting because they weren't feeding on the Word of God. They weren't listening to His Word and obeying it. The point that God's Word touches us today, Isaiah was looking at a crushed people who now began to search because they were hungry and spiritually thirsty. And his words come on the heels of previous chapters of Isaiah where Isaiah, in, for example, in chapter 40, brings them a message of comfort, comfort my people. In Isaiah chapter 53, he talks about the suffering servant that would come in the person of Jesus Christ and talks about how his life and his blood would pay for the sins of all those, uh, of all people of all time. And now he brings comfort to them as he directs them to the word of God. Come, all you who are thirsty, come to the waters, and you who have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money, without cost. Why spend money on what is not bread and your labor on what does not satisfy? Listen. Listen to me and eat what is good and your soul will delight in the richest of fare. Give ear and come to me. Hear me that your soul may live. I will make an everlasting covenant with you my faithful love promised to David. Notice it's for those who don't have any money. It's free. It's without cost. That's kind of a strange request, isn't it? The fact that he's saying it's free. Normally when we hear that word free, we put quotation marks around it because there's always strings attached to it. And someone famously said, there is no such thing as a free lunch. But in this case, God's banquet really is. But people don't believe it, and so they, they want to pack their own lunch and bring it along. Some of the things that they might pack along would be that the fact that there are things that they have accumulated that they think would be good when it comes to the spiritual hunger and thirst that they have. Maybe it's the life that they've lived. And looking at that life and saying, well, why do I need what God wants to give me when my life is a shining example? Or perhaps they look at what they have done in their lives when they look at the people that they have, uh, that they have touched in their lives and how successful that they have been. Maybe what they bring along is a coupon of their their good deeds and say, well, 
I'm going to throw this into the pot. But in that case, they spend money on what is not bread or on work that does not satisfy. I think there is a lot of spiritual junk food that's out there. And there is no nutritional label that shows us what's wrong with those things. So the prophet Isaiah points us to what God has given us and what God provides for us. Because we seek the filling of our souls sometimes from things that cannot fill us up forever. Worldly solutions to find a satisfaction with our continually falling into sin don't really offer the satisfaction that we need. Sometimes people might say to us, well, just try to behave better. But try as we might, we keep, re we keep reinventing and falling back into the same sins that we've fallen into before, and along the way, probably inventing some new ones. Some may tell us that our problem with sin is that we just need to change our definition of bad behavior. They say, just forget that Victorian meant, uh, morality because it's outdated. What they say, the Bible isn't relevant for our day and age. We've got to change with the times. But the strange thing is that the sin keeps happening in our lives. And even if we call it by a different name, we still reap the negative consequences whether we think of them as sins or not. What are we going to do? Where are we going to go? How are we going to deal with this in our souls? Where is the peace that we need so that we can go on to tomorrow and the week that lies ahead? You're invited. You're invited to God's banquet today. And that's what Isaiah is telling us. He's saying we're invited to come to hear what God has to offer us we're invited every day to come to feed at His table so that the spiritual needs that we have are taken care of. So that the uneasiness that we feel in our hearts and in our souls, and maybe the emptiness that is there, can be filled because He has exactly what we need. Well, we're probably a lot quicker today than we were in years back to pick up on a good restaurant. If somebody mentions a restaurant, well, a person can just Google that restaurant and immediately it pops up and you've probably got a list of maybe 25 or 30 comments, each one giving so many stars. That might be just enough to say, you know what, I'm going to try that place. There's a lot of people that seem to like it. I had a friend of mine that when we would walk into a restaurant, one of the first things that he would do is he would take a peek in the kitchen <laughs> because he wanted to see what the kitchen looked like. And he didn't always normally tip the server, he would tip the dishwasher. I think sometimes we may be like that too when it comes to what God has to offer. Maybe we spiritually check the words that are spoken on a Sunday morning. Or the words that are spoken in a Bible study during the middle of the week. And that's a good thing. Because looking into God's Word and weighing it, weighing it against what is spoken, is a very important thing. How do we know that this is the Word of God? How can we spiritually check what food, spiritual food we receive if we're not looking much deeper into the Word of God. The Apostle Paul had praise for the Christians who were in Berea because he said they were a lot different than some of the other places where he had preached. He said they checked the Word of God every day to see that what I'm teaching or preaching is really true. Isaiah says, listen, listen, give ear, hear. In other words, he's saying, don't miss out. 
I'm repeating it for your benefit, he's saying. Isaiah points to the only one who can satisfy our spiritual hunger and thirst, and that is the Almighty God. It's the God of the covenant. Now, I, Isaiah presents this banquet by reminding his readers and us of the wonders of our God. When he talks about the covenant, he was the one who made the covenant with Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and David. The covenant that showed the faithful love of God and that we have sung about a number of times. God's love is faithful. And God is faithful. In fact, when the Apostle Paul in that section from Romans talked about the fact that there is nothing that can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord, he was pointing to the many passages in Scripture where God tells us He will never leave us or forsake us, and that He always has our best interest in mind. It is God's faithfulness that shows us the fact that He loves us with beautiful pictures from Scripture that show Him forgiving His children. When David was caught in the sin of not only adultery, but also murder, God used his prophet Nathan to call him to repentance. And when David said, I have sinned, David's thirst was quenched. His spiritual hunger was satisfied when Nathan the prophet said, the Lord has forgiven you this sin. David's response can certainly be ours. A response of praise and thanksgiving and relief knowing that sin has been forgiven and forgotten. It's very possible that we may become so used to the worship pattern that we have or the liturgy that we use that we forget or lose interest in the rich banquet that God gives to us through that liturgical service that we have. Just the fact that we come together and we're able as a corporate body of believers to come before the Lord's altar and ask for forgiveness for our sins. We confess our sins. And then to hear God's servants say, your sins are forgiven. It's a wonderful banquet that God prepares for us on a regular basis. Isaiah alludes to getting back to the essentials of God's banquet when he says, your soul will delight in the richest of fairs that your soul may live. What is it that God sets before us that takes care of even the thirstiest or most famished person spiritually? It's the Word of God. It's the Word of God, the Gospel in Word and Sacraments. Look at the banquet that God prepares for us today as we dine on the body and the blood of the Lord in with and under the bread and the wine. And we hear His words given and poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. That is something that does fill our souls and our hearts with peace, with comfort, and with hope. What a rich banquet that satisfies our every need of forgiveness, our need of peace with God, our need for the assurance of eternal life. There is no end of the spiritually rich food that God has in store for us with His Word and His sacraments. And so he invites us. He invites us to come, not to just look, but to partake of that to our good. I still remember last December, a couple came and knocked on my door and they handed me an invitation. They were neighbors somewhere down the road. Actually, they're down Clap Road a few, a few doors. And it seems like this was the second year that they invited the neighbors over for a holiday brunch. And I was, I was surprised. I think the year before I had gotten it maybe a week late. Um, and uh, so I was not able, to make, not able to make that holiday brunch. But I remember walking down Clat Road in the dark, the snow crunching under my feet, very, very cold, and wondering, okay, now where is this house located, and what am I going to find when I get there? Talk about a warm welcome. 
opened the door to their home, invited me in. I mean, I took my shoes off, was able to walk in to the wonderful aroma of a holiday brunch that was second to none. The sights, the sounds, the smells of that breakfast were amazing. They didn't even know me, although they said they did because they saw what was going on here at the church. They had seen me outside before, so they knew me by sight. But they opened up their home and they offered fresh pancakes. They offered all kinds of toppings from birch syrup to maple syrup. Warm birch syrup, warm maple syrup. And everything else you can imagine that would go on top of those pancakes. Pastries, freshly made. And hot coffee that was second to none. They invited me in. Wow, a lot of other neighbors were there. In fact, uh, I think Morgan and Joe came up uh, from their home and because they were invited too. It left a big impression on me the neighbors of mine would invite me to come over and enjoy a brunch with them. Our God invites us. He invites us to a brunch that is really second to none when it comes to spiritual food that he's given to us. And Isaiah points to that when he says, Surely you will summon nations you do not know, and nations that do not know you will hasten to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for He has endowed you with splendor. And the rich aroma of, what, uh, of the banquet that our God invites us to is the aroma of His love, of His forgiveness, of His promises of what will come. One of the songs that we sing at camp has this one verse that sticks in my mind. I wish for you, my friend, the happiness that I've found. You can depend on Him. It matters not where you're bound. I'll shout it from the mountaintops. I want the world to know. The Lord of life has come to me. I want to pass it on. And when Isaiah says, surely you will summon, it's taken for granted that we have the greatest invitation of all. Not just for one holiday brunch, but it is a lifetime of spiritual meals that will satisfy us, that will feed us, that will comfort us, that will forgive us, that will give us hope, a hope of looking forward in time to when our God will come and take us to be with Him forever. And when our God throws a brunch, He doesn't skimp. You know, you think about the Israelites in the desert, and God was giving them manna every day. But then they got tired of the manna, and they wanted meat. And so God caused quail to come into the camp. And I get the picture in my mind that those quail were like probably stacked up as, as high as a person's knee. Oh, God made sure that they had plenty of quail. And he took care of them during that whole time in the desert. Remember the feeding of the 5,000 that we heard of this morning. Five loaves, two small fish, and Jesus turns it into a banquet where there were 12 basketfuls of bread that were left at the end. He doesn't skimp on spiritual matters either. When He lays out His banquet for us and others, there's plenty. The splendor he gives is the robe of Christ's righteousness that shines brightly against this dark background of our sins. And like a ray of sunshine that streams through the darkened clouds or a delicate flower that clings so high up in the mountains to the rocks, what a banquet the Lord prepares for us. Are you thirsty? Are you hungry? And listen to the words of Isaiah. Come, all you who are thirsty, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Why spend money on what is not bread and your labor on what does not satisfy? Listen, listen to me and eat what is good 
and your soul will delight in the richest of fare. And so sometimes we sing, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is he who takes refuge in him. Amen. Please rise. And now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We confess the faith that God has given us according to the words of the Nicene Creed on the bottom of page 32. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. We continue our worship as we bring our offerings to the Lord. Please rise for prayer. Father, for giving us life and breath, talent and energy, we thank you. For income and nourishment, for honest work and opportunities to be useful, we look gratefully to you as our provider. For safety in our travels, we rejoice in the protection your angels give. For national peace, public prosperity, and moral consciousness in all citizens, hear our prayers. Lord Jesus, through you we have the full rights of children of God. What love the Father has lavished on us through our relationship with you. We praise you for saving us and giving your life as a ransom for our sin. May our spirits revive in us the rest and peace of your forgiveness. Holy Spirit, through word and sacrament, restore to us the joy of your salvation. Cause the good seed of the word to produce sturdy faith and godly attitudes and behavior in each believer. We rejoice this day in the fellowship we enjoy in our congregation and our synod. Keep our parish and synodical leaders faithful to their tasks. Make them men of both courage and prayer. 
preserve Christ-centered doctrine and practice in our fellowship at all times. Make each of us active in Christian service and supportive of our leaders. Open our eyes to see the spiritual dangers facing those who do not yet trust You as Savior and Lord. Move us to invite them and to share with them the hope of unending life we have in You. Go with us into our world and support us in all we do to Your glory. Amen. We also offer special prayers this morning. Uh, First of all, uh, for Kim Dork, uh, who about two weeks ago fell off a ladder and um, broke her leg, had surgery recently. And uh, if you want to hear some of the details of that, please please speak to Brian. Um, also, we pray for Mary Reft, uh, who uh, was in the hospital this past week. Mary is, uh, is from Carlick on Kodiak, and uh, she is out of the hospital but still is suffering. And so we, we also pray for her. Compassionate Father, in Your mercy, You transform even sickness and disease into a blessing for Your children. With this confidence, we commit all who are sick or suffering to Your tender care. We pray especially for Kim and also for Mary. Provide healing and relief according to Your infinite wisdom and boundless mercy. Grant patient endurance if their sufferings must linger. Help them find true spiritual strength through Jesus and His cross during this time of physical weakness. We ask that You would help those who are helping them too. For all those who are providing whatever they, whatever is needed, the doctors, the nurses, the caregivers that are there, we ask that You would bless them so that they can bless both Kim and Mary. By the work of the Holy Spirit, Teach them to trust in Your forgiveness, grace, and love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We continue with the sacrament on page 33. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is good and right so to do. It is truly good and right that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who has called us to be His own so that we may live under Him in His kingdom and serve Him in everlasting righteousness innocence, and blessedness. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song. Blessed are You, O Lord of heaven and earth. We praise and thank You for sending Your Son, Jesus Christ. And we remember the great acts of love through which He has ransomed us from sin, death, and the devil's power. By His incarnation, 
He became one with us. By His perfect life, He fulfilled your holy will. By His innocent death, He overcame hell. By His rising from the grave, He opened heaven. Invited by Your grace and instructed by Your Word, we approach Your table with repentant and joyful hearts. Strengthen us through Christ's body and blood and preserve us in the true faith until we feast with Him and all His ransomed people in glory everlasting. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night He was betrayed, took bread. And when He had given thanks, He broke it and gave it to His disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is My body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of Me. Then He took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is My blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of Me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please be seated. We will commune approximately six at each table. Our second table is reserved for those who are worshiping with us from afar. I would ask that you please follow the directions of our ushers. Thank you. For those who are worshiping with us from afar, take and eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given into death for your sin. Take and drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed for you for the remission of your sin. 
And now may the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in the true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. Your sins are forgiven. Amen.
Please stand. We sing the song of Simeon, Nunc Dimittis, on page 37. We give you thanks, O Lord, for the foretaste of the heavenly banquet that you have given us to eat and to drink in this sacrament. Through this gift you have fed our faith, nourished our hope, and strengthened our love. By your Spirit, help us to live as your holy people until that day when you will receive us as your guests at the wedding supper of the Lamb, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Receive the benediction of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with His favor and give you peace. Please be seated for our final hymn, hymn number 332.
Good morning to everyone this morning. Special welcome to our newcomers, visitors. We're happy to have you worshiping with us, and we invite you to share a cup of coffee and some refreshments immediately following the worship service out in the Narthex area. And if you haven't as yet signed our guest book, uh, please do so. It is immediately to the left as you leave the sanctuary. Uh, one other announcement uh, about sanctuary is, or the, uh, um, the Narthex area is that there is a a membership directory that is out there that I would like to have you take a look at your listing. Make sure the information is correct. If it's not correct, please correct it. Uh, we are in the process of um, taking care of a new directory with some pictures. So um, if you can update your information, that would be, that would be wonderful. A couple of other announcements, and uh, that is, uh, Lord willing, I will be out in Kodiak this afternoon. Um, I fly back on Wednesday morning, um, and we haven't decided yet when the service is going to be out there. I know we're working with uh, the uh, Coast Guard Chapel, so sometimes we don't get all of that squared away until I get out there, so we'll see when that will be. But I will return on Wednesday morning. There will be Bible study Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. We are going to pick up the last part, uh, the last section on our portrait of uh, the Apostle Peter. Um, other announcements? Rachel, thank you for the beautiful music. God's blessings to you this week. Mm -hmm.